Hey S'mores, I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to Morse Code. I do tech reviews and tutorials, so if you are looking for in-depth tech and gadget content, you've come to the right place. LastPass just threw everyone a curveball last week, saying that their free app will no longer be useful. Okay, okay, they did not necessarily say that it wouldn't be useful, but they are changing it so drastically that if you were using it on the free tier, then you're basically being forced to either A, start paying a premium, or B, switch to a different password manager. This was actually an announced a really long time ago, but nobody paid attention to it until now. So what's going on? Well, on March 16th, LastPass Free will no longer work cross-platform per account. They are switching the free version so it can only work on either computers or mobile. So if you currently use LastPass Free on both your phone and your laptop, come March 16th, it will only be available on either your laptop or your phone, not both. This is dumb. Generally, people need to be able to access passwords on both a computer and a phone. So it forces your hand as a consumer to either pay or switch. Now you could stay, but why would you? This change would slow down your password entry on whichever device LastPass does not work on, as you will now have to look up your password in your LastPass app or your extension, then type it into the alternative device. Like if I had the app on my phone and I wanted to sign into a site on my computer, I would have to open LastPass on my phone and type it into my computer. Or I would have to text or email myself the password, but that's not as secure. This inhibits the convenience that I love about password managers because it brings back the original problem. You have to type your passwords in again and they aren't easily accessible. <sighs> Now, I suspect that this change will make a lot of people who use LastPass Free slowly start using bad passwords again that they can memorize, or they will stop using a password manager altogether. Please, please don't do that. Password managers are convenient and they are secure. They are worth their weight in gold. Now, I have been paying for LastPass Premium for years, mainly just because I use it for sharing passwords with my work acquaintances, so I need to have that sharing capability in every Everybody that I know uses LastPass. I consider that to be worth the price, but that's just because it's for work and I can expense it. But if I just use LastPass for personal use, like I assume most people do, then I would not pay for it because there are free alternatives out there and a lot of them are cheaper too. Free ones that are now much better than LastPass's free tier, and they offer built-in security that should be free to use and not stuck behind a paywall. Now, before I get into these password managers that I wanted to recommend, I wanted to take a moment to thank my sponsor for today's video. The Innovation Program has graduates who have worked with the program to develop their concepts into real-world technologies, so I have been featuring several innovators throughout this month, and you can check out more inventions using their links below. Yoshihiro Sejima is today's featured innovator. He has a goal to create eyes that perfectly capture human emotions. He wonders if it's possible to create robotic eyes that are so attractive that humans could fall in love with them. Ooh, do you think that could happen? Hmm. His crying robot sheds tears in a realistic manner, and when applied to animatronics, it could create for the most realistic robotic eyes ever created. The pupils expand and contract based on images it sees along with light captured. It's capable of tracking images too, like in this game of look away. Tech like this, as well as this very cool self-writing clock, which is a wooden clock that erases and writes the time by itself every single minute, very steampunk, is featured through the innovation program, but also at their yearly event held in Tokyo called Open Innovation, where the program announces all of those selected for the upcoming year's disruptive challenge, as well as honor winners of the Generation Award. So keep an eye on the innovation program's social media, their website, and their YouTube channel for information about this year's application period Period, which is starting this summer, and open innovation in the fall. I have a feeling a lot of hackers out there would want to apply for this because it sounds awesome. You could be one of the innovators that is exploring the world of the future, and you can see more profiles and more innovations over at innovators.com en. That's I-N-N-O-U-V-A-T-O-R-S dot com slash en. Thank you so much to the innovation program for their support of my channel. So this is my comparison of a bunch of different password managers
features that do have free tiers. If you want me to review these in more detail or show you how to export passwords and import them into a new manager, let me know which ones you are interested in. I'm happy to do separate videos about whichever ones you want. Also a bit of a disclosure, I am a tech reviewer. I have like 400 passwords stored. I have shared accounts and I'm often targeted in brute force attacks or social engineering. So my risk assessment, my personal risk assessment is going to be a little bit different than yours. What I consider to matter most in a password manager may not be what you need. So make a list of your must haves and choose the password manager that matches up with your needs the best. A lot of these articles that you will see online about best password managers are chock full of affiliate links as well. So do your own research to ensure that there is no bias going on there. I do have two affiliate links down below. One is for Abine's Delete Me, which is awesome and I pay for it myself. And the other one is for LastPass, but as you can see, I'm not really talking up LastPass in this video am I? These are also the same kind of share links that anybody who pays for these accounts can sign up for. So it's not some kind of partnership or anything. It's just something that I get because I'm a consumer and a customer of those products as well. So here are my top five password managers based on the free tiers with note of several other ones that you may want to check out at the end. Number one is Bitwarden. This one has been recommended by tons of folks when considering a switch away from LastPass. Bitwarden free for personal use is cross-platform, so it will sync across all of your devices. It also gives you access to item storage, link notes, and cards. A password generator is built in as well as 2FA, and there is a self-hosted option if you want that additional security. The paid plans are cheaper than LastPass's premium, and they do offer similar specs, like shared access, encrypted file attachments, hardware two-factor authentication options, and priority support. That stuff costs about $10 a year. Did I mention that it's also over open source. So that's cool. Number two is your browser. I will use the Chrome browser as my example, but this also works with Microsoft Edge and Firefox. In the Chrome browser, as soon as you install Chrome, the password manager comes with it already built in and enabled. The Chrome browser allows you to sync across all of your devices as soon as you sign in with your Google account. So in my case, I use a Gmail account. Since my Gmail account is secured using a physical hardware token and two-factor authentication, that also means my built-in Chrome browser password manager is secured using the same token and two-factor authentication. So it is free cross-platform and it works anywhere where you have Chrome installed, but there is no family sharing and it won't autofill outside of the browser. You would have to copy and paste your passwords. Number three, is PassHub. You have heard of PassHub before because WWPass, the creators, have been a sponsor on my channel. They are not sponsoring this episode though. The reason I like PassHub is because they have a completely no knowledge policy and it is incredibly secure. This one's also cross-platform so you can use it on mobile or desktop with the accompanying WWPass key app. You just scan a QR code and then you put in your own credentials to access your safe. You can also share segmented safes with passwords stored in them with other people as well. Is this one easy? Yes. If you are technical, it also does not autofill and it won't auto capture passwords from login pages. So it lacks some of those conveniences, but in turn, it offers excellent security and it is free up to 100 entries. And number four is KeyPass. This is one of the old school ones. This has been around for like at least a decade that I can remember. It is free, it's open source, it's cross-platform and it's readily available for all of your devices, but it does not auto sync across those devices. You would have to save a master key locked encrypted database safe to a cloud service provider of your choice and then access it from whatever machine that you are using. The GUI, the graphical user interface is not super friendly to non-tech savvy folks. And in order to use it on some platforms, you do have to use credited unofficial third-party plugins or apps. Nowadays, it does have autofill capabilities and it does allow for sharing. There is no 2FA, but you can run it off of a thumb drive using the portable version. This one is definitely not as convenient, but it's absolutely targeted towards folks that want the utmost of security who are okay with sacrificing some of those conveniences. And number five is MyKey. It's M-Y-K-I, which is a free cross-platform app for password storage. This one does offline syncing and you can download it on a mobile device, for example, and then scan a QR code on your computer to allow MyKey to sync with that computer. There is no master password to remember. You just 
just use Face ID, a PIN code, or a fingerprint to access it. It also has 2FA token storage and auto-filling capabilities, which is a pretty cool add-on. If logging into a site on your PC, you can grant access via the app on your phone. You can also share access without revealing passwords, and you can store credit cards alongside your passwords as well. Now stay tuned for my alternative picks or skip ahead using the chapter markers here on YouTube. So alongside those five are a bunch of other ones that I did want to mention, but they are lower on the list if I was choosing a free one. So the other ones? Well, RoboForm charges you to sync across devices. The free version does not support 2FA either, so that one's kind of out for me. NordPass Free will only let you be logged into one device at a time, so that can be very annoying, especially if you use an incredibly long or complicated master password for your password manager for NordPass. Can you imagine typing in like, a 128 character password into the NordPass app on your phone every time you want to log into it? Oh, you would save it in your notes. Yeah, well, there goes that security. So that one's kind of a pass for me as well. Log Me Once is a new one for me. They have pretty much everything in the free version, but it is supported with ads and it limits the password sharing to five and it also limits 2FA to email and Google Authenticator. Zoho Vault offers basically everything that I would look for in a free password manager except for sharing and cloud backup. Those cost extra. Dashlane only works on one device and up to 50 passwords stored for the free version, so that one's out. OnePass does not even have a free plan, so also out if you're looking for the free ones. MPass limits how many passwords you can actually save on the light plan. Sticky Passwords lacks the cloud syncing and the family sharing on its free plan, but they do donate to the Save the Manatee Club with the paid subscription version, so I did want to mention that one. And Abine has a new one called blur that does not do any backup or syncing for free, those cost extra. So what I found when I was doing this research is that most of them offer some kind of free plan, whatever it may be, but many of them are severely limited. And most of them do lose some of those capabilities until you pay up. If you do opt to pay for one of them, they are all priced pretty competitively. Some of them are really inexpensive. And again, I do not mind paying for a password manager since it saves me so much time and I have so many different devices and I use a lot of different accounts for all of my tech reviews. Now, don't forget, let me know down below if you want me to do any in-depth reviews of password managers because there are tons of them. Shout out to my newest Patreon supporter as well, Night Raptor. You are awesome. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon. Thanks again to my s'mores for subscribing and watching. I'm Shannon Morris and I will see you soon. Bye y'all.